My name is Alan Eddington. My name is Jordan Olive. Um, so our objective was, first off, our project was sonar mapping, and our objective was to create a system that could autonomously map out an area that was otherwise inaccessible by humans. Uh -huh. So our project wasn't so much about the actual robot, but more so the system, a system that could map areas that, you know, humans can go to. Yeah. So potentially what we'd want to do is you could take off all the electronic components and you could put them into either a submersible or on a, a gyrocopter and so you could map in many different situations. Yeah, so some of the hardware we used for this robot was first the Raspberry Pi. That's probably our most essential piece of hardware on this uh, rover right now. It's our main processor. We use it to graphically graph our area that we're mapping out. And we use it also to control the motors. Yeah. Next, we had, just because we had a lack of pins with the Raspberry Pi, we had to hook it up to the Arduino Mega. Um, obviously, there's a lot more pins on the Mega, and so we had that controlling the sonars, and then it returns back a signal to the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. So as far as our software goes, we are using what we call Pi games. It's, it's all encoded in Python, and we're using event handlers to register our key presses. That way, we can drive our robot around. And so... Um, along with that, um, the sonars, when they detect an object, um, as I said earlier, they'll send back a signal to the, the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi takes that information and can interpret it into what is the graphical map. Yeah, one of the cool things about our, our multi-air system is the graphical map. As you see right here, we have a simple 4x4 four four grid. However, that grid can dynamically grow. Like we'll demonstrate in a little bit, we also can uh, have a 20x20, 20 20, depending on our room size. Yeah, and so um, that was actually one of the um, bigger challenges was making it so that it was dynamic and that it could grow. Um, still, right now we we actually have to need we actually need to know the size of the room before we can map it. But one of the next steps was actually to make it so that without knowing the dimensions of the room, the, the bot could drive in and tell you exactly how big the room is. So for future projects, one of the things we could improve upon is the resolution. Right now, due to our sonar sensors. The farther we get away from our sonar sensors, the less definition we have. Right now, we're limited to about two feet. Beyond that, it gets really inaccurate. For future projects, what we could do is we could implement IR sensors. IR sensors are a lot more precise. The actual model we were looking at was $150 a piece for the IR sensor, and that had definition within an inch. And then along with that, um, our overall goal is to make this completely autonomous. Um, well, the, the key element to that is the accelerometer. We were getting lots of electrical interference from the other components, um, and we were only spending about $2 on the accelerometer, so you can buy more expensive ones that are self-shielded, but that was not in the budget, so we were unable to implement that, that part of the pro pro project. Yeah. So next, we'll give you a little demonstration of our, of our robot. Pause it. So next, we're gonna show you a little demonstration of our robot. Right here on my computer screen, we have a 20 by 20 grid. Each one of these little squares right here represents one square foot. And so the way our robot works right here is we first start off on the grid and we select the starting point. We select that point. And then what we can do is we can use our arrow keys and our robot, which is right down here in a little obstacle course, we can use the arrow keys to ping the left sonar, the right sonar, and then the forward sonar. So for example, right now, if I ping the forward one, it is clear, the left one is clear, and so is the right one, as shown right here, actually, on the floor. Next, what we can do is we can drive our robot forward using our WASD keys. So for example, we drive it forward to about that spot, and then we can do the same exact steps. We can ping forward to see if it's clear, left to see if it's clear, which it is not. It is currently red, as shown on the, the floor, and then right which is also clear and so that's just a little example of our robot and it works pretty good and you know yeah that, I'm gonna cut that out.